Before we get into stamps, just want to say something about the U.S. Postal Service. It used to be called the U.S. Uh, uh, Post Office Department. And in the early 1800s, for those of you studying U.S. history, um, there wasn't a lot going on in the U.S. If you ask people, you know, what was happening in the U.S. in the early 1800s, a lot of people consider that kind of a slow period of U.S. history. But really, uh, if you look at newspapers between about 1810 and 1830, there was a really controversial issue going on, whether the post office should operate on Sundays. Now, looking at it from today, it seems kind of silly, but this was an incredibly explosive issue that went on actually beyond that time period, almost all the way up to the early 1900s before they finally, Congress finally came in and said, you know, the post office cannot operate on Sundays. Since that time, they've changed. They have Sunday delivery and some post offices are open on Sunday. But it was a really big deal. And so a lot of the things that we're gonna look at today may not seem that important today. And certainly it's uh, a lot of these topics are things that are not thought a lot about today. But during uh, the time period of the 20th century, um, they were very, very, very important and controversial. I grew up during a lot of that time. I know most of you didn't, uh, but we'll look at some of these stamps here. So this was a stamp uh, called the Mortal Chaplains from 1948, right out of World War II. And when you see the Scott numbers on the screen, that's just for uh, stamp collectors. That kind of identifies the stamp. So this was a stamp uh, that came out. What happened, these um, four chaplains were on a boat called the USS Dorster, and in 1943, uh, the boat got torpedoed and it sank with uh, not only a lot of service people on there, but these four chaplains. One was a Roman Catholic priest, one was a rabbi, one was a Methodist minister, and one was a Reformed Church of America minister. And so they went down, and so Congress wanted to, uh, to honor them, and they put out the stamp in, in their honor. And in many ways, it's the first ecumenical type of stamp by having these four different religion, uh, min religious ministers on the stamp. Um, and they even have the note there on the side that says, Interfaith in Action. So this stamp really wasn't controversial when it came out. Now this stamp was a little more controversial. This came out in 1954, the Liberty Issue in 1954. And on the top there, it says, in God we trust. This was about the time that that was added uh, to coins and, and other, other types of materials. I, I believe, I believe that's about the time it came out in the 1950s. And this stamp was controversial. Some people got upset, but the post office said, no, uh, this is, you know, the motto of the U.S. Citizen Stamp Advisory Commission, this was established in 1957. They're the group that decides what goes on postage stamps. So when you, know, you buy a postage stamp at the post office and it has something on it, like the Simpsons or something, you say, who gets to decide what's on postage stamps? So it's this group here. And um, <clears throat> one of their rules was that stamps or stationary items should not portray religious type people or institutions who are mainly associated with religion. So they didn't want to violate the establishment clause of the U.S. Constitution. However, as we'll soon see, uh, that hasn't always been, um, been followed. So later that same year, 1957, this stamp commemorates the Flushing uh, Remonstrance, which was a commemoration of what happened uh, 300 years before the stamp came out, it was in 1657, what happened a number of people in the colony of what was then called uh, New Stuyvesant um, protested to the governor, Peter Stuyvesant, that uh, what was going on was that uh, Quakers were not able to uh, honor their religion uh, peaceably. And so there was a big complaint and uh, Stuyvesant jailed a lot of the dissenters, put them in jail. It was until about six years later when the Dutch West Indies Company came out and told him, hey, you know, you have to stop all religious persecution. So this was a big deal at the time, and in many ways it started leading toward the, uh, the acceptance of a country that has and, and tolerates and allows many, many types of different faiths. So in the 1960s and 1970s, this is a very 
social time of upheaval. A lot of your parents and grandparents might, might have told you about it. You know, there were the hippies, the Vietnam War. I had a, I had a long pair of bell bottoms pants that were uh, sort of this orange velour that flared out at the bottom. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff was going on. And uh, what happened during those two decades also was there was a lot of talk about religion and religious rights and the separation of church and state. Madeline Murray O'Hare was an atheist activist who sued the government and won and said, you know, schools should not be able to do Bible readings and not to have prayer in school. That was a super controversial issue at the time. And, um, and she won the case, and so that led to there not being uh, prayer allowed in the public schools. Here's the Establishment Clause of the U.S. Constitution. Congress shall make no law respecting establishment religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Post office service is part of the federal government, and so it does have to follow this. So the first U.S. Christmas postage stamp was issued in 1962. And you see, in many ways, it's somewhat secular. It has symbols of Christmas, the candles and the wreath. It's in green and red. But it does not have a cross, a crash, a church, bless you, or anything you know that's more seriously considered sort of part of religion. So there were protests against the stamp when it came out. Uh, there were protests, but the protesters lost, and uh, it became an incredibly uh, popular stamp. I think they sold a billion copies that first year in 1962. Dante's stamp, Dante's not really a religious person. He was a, an Italian writer, but he wrote, as many of you know, The Divine Comedy. And uh, that was in many ways considered a religious work. Uh, there, were no, there was no real controversy about this stamp when it came out. Now, Gabriel has a direct relation to Christmas because in the Christmas story, the angel Gabriel is the angel who, according to the Bible, came down and announced to Mary that she was to give birth to Jesus. Ironically, the reason this stamp was controversial isn't really so much because of that story, but for stamp collectors to get all the numbers and that is all the plate numbers. Those are numbers that are printed on the sides of the, of the plate of stamps when you buy them. I apologize, I know it's kind of small, it's hard to see that there with that strip of 10 stamps. There are numbers on each side. So in the past, before this, if you wanted what's called a plate block, you only had to buy four stamps together. With this stamp, you now had to buy 10 stamps. So this stamp was controversial, not because of the topic, uh, but because uh, stamp collectors had to buy 10 of these at a time. This is one of my favorite stamps, Winter Sunday in Norway, Maine. It's done by an anonymous folk artist. Some of you have this stamp in, in your packet. There's a church there, but this wasn't a controversial stamp. This stamp, uh, 1974, was the first U.S. self-adhesive stamps used to be lick and stick. It wasn't very popular because it turned yellow and it got these gross yellow and brown spots on them. For some reason, the paper wasn't too good. And so because of that, they actually stopped making self-adhesive stamps for another 15 or 20 years before they uh, started making them again. Here's another uh, stamp, another uh, set of Christmas stamps from 1975. These were kind of controversial, not because of religion, because these were uh, the first stamps that did not have the price on them. They were worth 10 cents, but they didn't put that on there, and that's because Congress at that time thought there may be a rate increase and they didn't want to put the, uh, the price on the stamps. But if you have these stamps in your envelope, I think some of you do, uh, these would have been worth 10 cents uh, mint. These were the first holiday stamps in the U.S., but then uh, they started making other uh, holiday stamps too. In 1966, 1996, the first Hanukkah stamp. In 1997, the first Kwanzaa stamp. 2001, the first Eid stamp to celebrate two uh, Muslim Islamic Eid uh, festivals. And then in 2016, the first Hindu uh, Diwali stamp came out. 1995, there was controversy about this stamp. Some of you have this stamp in your packet. This was called the Victorian Midnight Angel stamp. And the reason it was controversial is because post office had been uh, making the Madonna and Child stamp every year for Christmas for 30 years. They decided in 1985 to not do the Madonna and Child stamp this year, but instead do the Victorian Angel. 
There was this massive outcry, a massive outcry. People said, no, no, we want the Madonna and Child stamp this year, at least one of their versions. And so uh, they didn't cancel the uh, Victorian Midnight Angel stamp. What they did, they just added the Madonna and Child stamp. So there were three stamps you could get that year for Christmas. There was this stamp, there was a Madonna and Child version of the stamp, and then there was sort of a uh, uh, sectarian version of a, a holiday stamp. I think it was a snowman. Uh, this stamp came out to 2010. You all know Mother Teresa, uh, sometimes called the Saint of Calcutta. She was born in Albania, and she uh, went to help the poor in Calcutta, India. She dedicated her whole life to doing that. This was this controversial stamp because she's a Roman Catholic nun, and this was viewed as being too much, uh, so too much of support for the Roman Catholic Church by some people. So there was a lot of controversy, a lot of protest. But the, uh, the post office said, no, no, we're not honoring her because she's a Roman Catholic nun. We're honoring her for her service to the poor and her inspiration to others. This stamp came out in 2012. This was one of the first religious stamps that did not have, there were no protests, no complaints. Not one letter went in to protest this stamp. Uh, obviously, this is the flight from Egypt, the Holy Family, and in some ways the stamp still rings true about 10 years later. You know, we hear what's going on in Ukraine and the southern border, the, uh, the whole issue of immigrants needing to go to a place that offers them sanctuary. In many ways, the stamp uh, honors and mirrors that. So, let's take a little quiz. We'll play a little game. Uh, is it easy to know if a, stamp, if a stamp is religious? And I think we've seen the answer is, uh, no, it's not necessarily easy. So let's, let's play a little game and see how well we do. There, there are no right or wrong answers to this. This was Apollo 8. Uh, this came out in 1969 before the moon uh, lunar landing in uh, the summer of 69. This stamp was a little controversial because there's a Bible verse. So is this a religious stamp? Okay. I'd say about half, about half of you, yeah. So we can see it's kind of hard, right? Some people would consider this a religious stamp, some people not, yeah. This stamp, Martin Luther King Jr., this was part of the uh, Post Office's Black Heritage series. This came out in 1979. I guess because of space, they left out the Reverend Doctor. Would you say this is a religious stamp? So about half, yeah. So another example of a stamp that some people may consider religious, some people may not. Next, Martin Luther, the founder of uh, Protestantism around the world. This stamp came out in 1983, a 500-year uh, celebration, 1483 to 1983. Is this a religious stamp? Raise your hand if you think this is a religious stamp. Okay, good, you can put your hands down. So again, almost half and half, right? So, and I guess those of you who were saying it was religious is because obviously he was a, a religious leader. So we see as we're getting forward in time, uh, what happened, uh, a lot of the concern in the 1960s, 1970s sort of faded away. And I think a lot of that has to do with other issues being in the news, other issues being important. So for a while, these issues were very, very important. Uh, and of course, the, the establishment clause of the US Constitution is still very important for a lot of different reasons. But certainly, it does not seem to affect stamps today. So lots of stamps come out today honoring different religions. And that may have something to do with it, too. Uh, when the stamps first came out, the holiday stamps, uh, those were all related to the Christian religion. And it wasn't until about 20, 30 years later when the other stamps of other religions came out. So I think a lot of people are fine with that. Um, and also, just. I think less people are, are mailing letters and things. We don't use stamps as much. So the bottom line today, it's not quite as big a deal as it was uh, about 40, 50 years ago. And I think that will probably continue on. So thank you so very much, I appreciate it. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. John Hotchner of the American Philatelic Society. He uh, uh, helped me with this presentation. Do you have any, uh, any questions at this time?